Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I'm really excited to bring you the Eileen shawl or scarf. This is named in memory of my late mom and it is really, really fun to crochet. Let me go ahead and show you. You can wear this as a shawl or you can easily convert it to a scarf in this manner. You can also wear your beautiful shawl pins, should you like, with this. This is really nice when you're going out on those cold days, and it really does help to keep you nice and warm, especially if you're not dressed really warm underneath that coat, but you can dress for the inside and outside at the same time and do it beautifully. Let me go ahead and show you the way this is. Okay, so give you, I'll go ahead and give you a better picture of this right here. For this project, I'm going to be using three hanks of this lovely hand-dyed yarn. And let me go ahead and give you some more stats on it. This is hand-dyed by Banshee Fiber Art Studio. This is not a paid endorsement, but I just love this yarn and I wanted to share it with you. And the makeup of this yarn is 60% superwash merino, 20% yak, and 20% silk. This is a sock or a fingering weight yarn. Each of these has approximately 400 yards or 100 grams, 3.5 ounces. The total is 1,200 yards and I'll tell you towards the end of this project how much I have left from these 1,200 yards. So you might probably need slightly less than 1,200 yards. For this project, I'll also be using a size G or six or 4.00 millimeters crochet hook. And I always recommend you have a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors handy. To begin, we're going to start with a slip knot and a beginning chain of 13 chains. We're going to begin row one by working a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four. That fourth chain, we're going to work a double crochet. And I'm just working in the side of the chain. If you want to work in the back bump, feel free to do that. It's just a preference thing for me to work along the side. We're not going to be working um, along the end, so you should be fine either way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish out this row. At the end of this row, you should have a total of 10 double crochets plus the chain three at the beginning. I do not include that in my stitch count. Okay, now we're going to turn and we are just going to work a few rows of ribbing by working a chain two. We're going to skip the first stitch and starting in the second stitch, we're going to work a front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet. And we're going to alternate that back and forth. Front post, let's try that one again. Front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet. So go ahead and finish this across and I'll show you how this ends. The row ends by working a front post double crochet in that last double crochet and then in the turning chain go ahead and work a half double crochet by just putting the hook into the entire chain, not in just a loop of it. Okay, so now we're going to turn, chain two, turn, and we're going to continue working the ribbing. This time we're going to still skip that half double, and we're going to begin with a back post double crochet. And 
and then we're going to work a front post in that next stitch and that's what we're going to alternate again which is starting with the back post instead of the front post. We want to make sure that we work front post over the stitches that are kind of sticking out on the front and we work a back post over those stitches that are protruding on the back. I'll just work this all the way across the row with you. And this row ends with a back post, double crochet worked over that last post stitch, and then a half double crochet in the turning chain, just like so. All right, let's do that again for row four. We're gonna chain two, and just like row two, we're going to skip that first stitch and we start with a front post double crochet. If you ever wonder what to start with, just look at where you are. If, if the stitch is sticking out on the front side, you work a front post. If it's on the back side, we work a back post double crochet. So go ahead and work this all the way across and work a half double crochet in that turning chain at the end of this row. For row number five, it's the same as row three, chain two, turn, and we begin with a back post, double crochet for that first stitch, and then front post, and alternate that all the way across the row, ending with a back post, double crochet as the last stitch, and then a half double crochet in that chain two turning chain. So now we're going to begin row six, which will begin the pattern, the established pattern for the shawl. We're going to chain three. We're going to work two double crochets in that first stitch. And then we're going to work one double crochet in each of the remaining stitches across the row. And notice that I am working in the top of the loops, not as post stitches at this point. So go ahead and work that all the way across the row. Okay, this is what you should have after working row six. Now we're going to turn to work. This is actually going to be the front side facing, just wanted to be clear. Um, it will have the back side of the double crochet showing, but I'm going to show you in just a second. You'll be able to tell the difference after we finish a couple rows here. Okay, now we're going to work the low front ridge row one. And if you've never worked this, I'm going to show you right now. We're going to skip the first stitch and we're going to work only in the front loop. And we're just simply going to work slip stitch in each stitch across. Oops, let me do that. There you go. So just in that first or the front loop, we're working slip stitches. This is going to leave just a slight raised edge of texture. I think it's going to look very great. Okay, and then work the last stitch, which is right here. Okay, this is what you should have for row seven. After working those slip stitches all the way across, we're going to turn. We're going to chain three, one, two, three. And then we are going to double crochet in the remaining loop, which is right here. And go ahead and work two double crochets in that first loop. You go ahead and make sure you can see this. I know the color is dark and I'm trying to make it as visible as possible. Okay, so I've worked two in that remaining loop and in the other remaining loops, we are just going to work one double crochet and you can see the loop is right here. So go ahead and work those all the way across and so you're noticing that the one side should be growing 
and this side is going to remain straight as we make this asymmetrical scarf. So this side where you have the increases should be starting off at an angle. Okay, so just go ahead and finish those double crochets working one in each of the remaining loops across the row. After row eight, we're going to turn and we are going to repeat row seven again. And that would be with a chain one. This is the low front ridge row. Skip the first stitch. And then we begin with a slip stitch working in the front loop only of the second stitch. And let me just make mention that this does not affect the stitch count. And the reason that we do that is this chain one actually lays in front of that first stitch. So it, it prevents a bulge on that side as we work this stitch. So just working those slip stitches in each stitch across. So after working row nine, we're going to turn, chain three, one, two, three. We're going to work two double crochets in that first loop from two rows previous, and then one double crochet in each stitch across. Again, just working in that remaining loop. I'll try to do a couple here so that you can see where that loop is. It's just the remaining loop from the double crochet of row number eight that has remained unused. I'll just go ahead and film this row completely. If you've never seen these stitches before, they can be a little tricky to know where to put the stitch or exactly. Okay. And don't forget there is one more stitch right there. Don't, don't leave out that end stitch. Okay, so now we're going to do this one more time. Chain one, turn, and we're going to skip that first stitch. This, again, is a repeat of, of the low front ridge. One more time, starting in that second stitch, working in the front loop only. Go ahead and slip stitch in each stitch across the row. Whoops and try to keep the yarn on the hook. That does help the stitches to come through a lot better. So just like the last row or two rows ago, go ahead and chain three for the next stitch, next row. And we're gonna work two stitches, two double crochets in that very first stitch of the row, working in that remaining loop and one double crochet in each of the stitches remaining. So go ahead and finish that. The next two rows are going to be a repeat of the last two rows. One more time. We're going to chain one and starting in that second stitch, we're going to slip stitch. Again, doing the low front ridge, work a slip stitch only in each of the front loops of the stitches as we go across. So go ahead and do that one more time. After working that all the way across, go ahead and turn, chain three, and then we're going to work two double crochets in that first loop, and then one in each of the remaining stitches across. So now we're going to repeat the last two rows two more times until we have a total of 17 double crochets across the row. So just to review, after we have the five rows of ribbing, one row of double crochets, that's row six, and then row seven is the low front ridge, row eight is the double crochet worked in the remaining loop. So of these repeats of row seven and eight, you should repeat that one two, three, four, five times more. 
So you should have one, two, three, four, five, six rows with the low front ridge and a total of seven rows of double crochet. Now we're ready to work the honeycomb stitch. We're going to start with a chain two. One, two. We're going to work a double crochet in that very first stitch. Now remember, this side of the row should remain straight. You should not have any increases on this side. The increases, this is what the front side facing, are only going to be on the left side of our work. Okay, so for the honeycomb, we're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, and then we're going to work front post treble crochets in the next two stitches. Now working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in these two stitches here. So bringing in the hook into the hole behind those two stitches, and then I like to stick my thumb up into the hole here and it helps me to locate that stitch and then work that front post treble crochet. And then again, coming into that hole and we're gonna find the next stitch, which is right here. And we wrap our hook around it as a front post stitch and then front post treble. I do have additional stitch videos on these stitches that might be easier to watch. I will put the links in the video description below. Okay, now we're going to skip the next two stitches and we're going to front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble crochet in the two stitches that we skipped. And once you do that, you form this large V like this, okay? This will be formed better once we get a few more rows completed. And we're gonna do this again. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble, in each of the next two stitches. Working behind those last two stitches, you come into this hole and we're going to front post treble in this stitch and then in this stitch. So let's pick this stitch first. And then once again, coming in. And we get that second stitch that we skipped. Okay, now we're going to skip the next two stitches and you should have two stitches there at the end of the row. We're going to go ahead and work those. Front post treble in each of those two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Just like that. And we're going to work two double crochets in that turning chain. Okay, let's stop. Let's see what we have here. So right now we have the down, up, and then down, up. Those large V stitches, which is the foundation of the honeycomb. I'm gonna turn, chain three. We're gonna work two double crochets in that first stitch and then one in that next double crochet and now across each of these post stitches we're going to work back post double crochets just straight across in each stitch as it appears so we'll have one two three, four, across that first group of crossed stitches, and then another group of four, one, two, 
three, and four. I'm just going to work this row across with you. And then again, one, two, three, and four. And then again, four more. One, two, three, and four. And then you have one double crochet in that last double crochet. Do not work in the turning chain because again, this other side, let's go ahead and turn. Um, the right side is the side that we do not want to grow. Okay, so now we're going to chain two for the next one. Double crochet in that first stitch. And now we begin another row with the honeycomb. Skip the next two stitches. Front post treble in the next two stitches. And this is where the honeycomb comes into shape. Working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. It's just the opposite of what we did two rows previous. Skip two, front post treble in the next two stitches. Working behind these last two stitches, we're going to come in to the back and front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. I'm depending heavily upon the nerve endings in my fingers and thumb in order to do this. I'm depending heavily upon these two right here, my thumb and my tall man finger, and to get that correct stitch. Okay, so I've done that one. It's going to look a little better, I promise, after the next row, but you can see the shape now, how the shape of this honeycomb stitch is formed. And that's what you want to see happening as we work this across. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble, and the next two, working in front of the last two stitches. We're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. And once again, skip the next two front post treble in the next two stitches. Working behind those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. One, and come into the hole again and get that last stitch. Okay, now it's time for us to finish out the other stitches that were not used in the honeycomb. One, Two, three, and in the turning chain, we're going to work two more stitches. One, and two. So you should have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is what we should have so far. It's a lot of nice texture, and I think this hand-dyed yarn is really, really making it fun to work. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start the next row. For the next row, we are going to chain three, one, two, three. We're going to work two double crochets in that first stitch. One, two. And we're going to work double crochets 
in the other stitches that are not part of the honeycomb stitch. Uh, if you could find the top loop, there we go. And then as we work across the back side of the post stitches, just like we did two rows prior to this row, we work back post double crochets. So go ahead and work those back post double crochets across the remaining stitches in the row. This row ends again by working a double crochet in that last double crochet. Do not work in the turning chain. Let's go ahead and turn and see what we have. We have just completed 22 rows and let's just go ahead and take a look at this. Each of these honeycombs has eight stitches. You also have one stitch at the beginning of each of these rows and stitches that are not included in this would be one, two, three, four, five, six double crochets that are not included in these honeycombs. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to repeat rows 7 and 8. That again is the low front ridge and then followed by the double crochets with the appropriate um, adding of the double crochets at the beginning. Remember with the back side facing you add two stitches in that first stitch adding an additional stitch you know, increasing that on that row. Okay so go ahead and work that three times more. I'll go ahead and start you on this, but I'm going to go ahead since it's just a repeat of what we've already done. Um, so I'll go ahead and start this again with the low front ridge worked in each stitch all the way across. And just don't forget at the beginning of the row that follows this, you're going to work two double crochets in that first stitch. So go ahead and work those After you complete this, you should have a total of 25 double crochets plus the turning chain. Okay, if you were watching this on subsequent repeats, you should have the, what you see here. If you, like for example, the first repeat, you're going to have three sets of honeycomb. We only have two here shown. After I repeat this, we're after I finish here, we're going to repeat these rows again with their increases above here and you're going to have three honeycombs and then you repeat this again uh, I guess after the honeycombs and then of course you repeat these rows with the low front ridge and the double crochets and then you just continually are going to be adding honeycombs as you go you're going to have more and more across so go ahead and repeat this. I'm going to do several repeats and then I will show you my progression and how that goes. And you can check the pattern if you're looking for very specific stitch counts. But just know that with each repeat, you're going to be adding eight stitches as you repeat this. It's, it's a little complicated to go stitch by stitch, row by row. But if you want to check for the exact stitch counts, definitely check the written pattern on this particular project. Okay, I have repeated this motif. That would be the honeycomb rows plus the rows with the low front ridge. That would be four of those rows, a total of 17 times or until the final row has a total of 18 honeycombs across. Okay, now I've also gone on and I completed the two rows with the actually four rows two repeats of the low front ridge and then I worked two more of those until we have one two three four rows with the ridges. So now I'm ready to work the last four rows which will be returning once again to the ribbing rows that look like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and I will start with a chain two 
and we are going to skip this first stitch and then we're going to work a front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet just like we did at the beginning so we're just going to work this all the way across the row and a back post at the end of the row I'm going to work two double crochets in the chain space after completing those two double crochets we're going to turn to begin the next row we're going to chain three I'm going to work two double crochets in that first space and then after that, I'm going to work a back post a double crochet. This is again with the, the back side of the work facing. And then we work a front post double crochet over the front post. We're just continuing what we see. Back post double crochet and front post double crochet. So as you go along, make sure that you're working front post over the front post and back post over the back post as they appear as you work across the row. So go ahead and we're going to work that all the way across. After working this all the way across, work one double crochet in the turning chain. And again, this is the straight side that has no increases. Okay, now we're going to turn and the next two rows will be the last two rows and they will be worked in the same manner as the last two that we just worked. We're going to chain two, skip that first stitch, and then we work our front post double crochet followed by the back post double crochet. Let me move that out of the way there for you. So just go ahead and continue this across the row and I will show you the end of the row again and the beginning of the last row after that. This row also ends by working two double crochets in the turning chain. Okay, now we're going to begin the last row. We are going to chain two, one, two, and we are not going to make any additions or any increases, but we are simply going to skip the first stitch and we're just going to work the front and back post double crochets all the way across for this row. Just like that. Okay, so go ahead and work all the way across and then you can fasten off at the end of this row. After working all the way across the row, I'm going to end by working a half double crochet in that turning chain and then I'm going to fasten it off. I'm going to actually give it two chains before I do that. I'm going to clip a generous strand right like that. Pull it through tightly. Now I'm going to give just a very quick tutorial on hiding loose ends. There should only be a few of those that you need to work on, but it is important that they be hidden well. And I like to do this before I do any blocking. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just run this down into the stitch so I can hide it as securely as I can. is probably more than enough but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and do that and give it a pull you want to be very gentle though okay and you can see that is well hidden and I'm also gonna hide them underneath a few of these stitches as well because I don't want this to come out especially along the edge and it's also, I also like to have them hidden as deeply as I can into the work and on the back side. 
Okay, that's more than enough, but okay. And then I like to give a little pull back on that. And these are not the sharpest scissors, but it's good if you have some sharp. Ah, very, there you go. Sorry, I'm away from home, away from my good scissors at the moment, but um, that will have to do. But you can see that is well hidden. All right, so go ahead and hide the remainder of those threads. Now I want to show you how you can work an optional edging along the side that had the increases. Okay, this is not required, but it might give it a more even edging. So in order to work this optional edging, I'm going to start with a slip knot. And then I'm going to work a chain one. And I'm going to work single crochets very evenly along the edging. The one key to doing this is to be sure that you are not making them either too loose or too tight. If you make them too tight, it can kind of uh, pull on the edge and we definitely don't want that to be the case. So we're just going to work these evenly along that long side. I well, hope you enjoyed making the Eileen scarf or shawl with me today. If you did, please comment below. I would love to hear from you. God bless. Bye-bye.